I'm Trigvi Thayer from the University of Iceland School of Education. I'm going to briefly discuss with you here about uh, networks, collaborative learning, and social innovation. Um, one of the things that I think we have to start out with is what we mean by innovation. And uh, Innovation has been defined in various ways, but general, in a general sense, I think the agreement is that an innovation is a novel process or product that produces some sort of change in, in society or, or whatever. Now, one of the things that I think is sort of in the essence of innovation that, that definitions like this don't get at is that innovation always involves some sort of meaning-making activity. That is, that to produce an innovation, be it a social innovation or whatever kind of innovation, that we need to introduce some sort of new meaning that changes the way that we relate to our environment. And that's where collaboration and networking come in. Because meaning making can never be a, an independent activity. Um, it always requires more than one person. And the reason I say that is probably best summed up um, by a famous example that uh, the philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein talks about in his Philosophical Investigations, that where he says that a, a, a personal private language is not possible. And the reason he says that is because if you have a private language, then there is no measure for the accurate conveyance of meaning other than you yourself. So that if you say, okay, I'm going to call this bush over here a horse, that can make perfect sense to you. But if you try to talk to someone else and call this bush a horse, they're not going to understand you because there's been no negotiation of this new meaning. And so it's only understandable to you. But while it's only understandable to you that you can alter the meaning at any point. And so you can say, well, I've already called this bush a horse, may as well call it a cat as well. And so there's no stability, and there's nothing that ensures that there is an accurate conveyance of the speaker's thought. And that's why there's this social di dimension always to meaning and, and constructing meaning. And so when we're trying to innovate, we need to construct the new meaning that is associated with the innovation in collaboration and in a social context with others because it needs to be negotiated. Now, there are many, many ridiculous patents that you can find online. Just search for ridiculous patents. Ideas that people have come up with that are often nonsensical. Um, it's hard to figure out what problem they're actually intended to address and how the proposed solution actually addresses any problem. And those sorts of ideas, um, let's say suggestions for innovations, that to me, that is what happens when you try to innovate in isolation. Because what is lacking is the negotiated meaning. And that can only happen when you're working with other people. So you need to have some sort of way to bounce your ideas off other people to both, both to, to sort of solidify the meaning for yourself, but also to arrive at some agreed upon way of describing the type of change that you're producing with um, your innovation. So to get back to where we started, the uh, networking and collaborative learning, that like innovation, at the core of any sort of learning activity is really a meaning-making activity. That is that we are trying to 
take new knowledge and use that to relate to our environment. And thus, you know, we gain new ways to describe what we experience in our environment and new ways to address any sort of challenges. Now, collaborative learning is in itself a deceptively simple concept that it's, it's, it just means that rather than learners engaging in learning activities independently, they do so in groups. And the reason we would do this is precisely because we view learning as a meaning-making activity. And for meaning-making to occur, to be viable, to be useful, then there has to be some sort of negotiation that goes on between those engaged in the meaning-making activity. Otherwise, they're just going to end up with Wittgenstein's private language, where they can basically say whatever they want and have it mean whatever they want. And so, through introducing collaborative activities as sort of the focus of the learning process, people are put into a situation where they are introduced to multiple perspectives. So the other learners will describe maybe challenges and situations differently than a certain individual, but also, and, and no less importantly, that each individual is put in a position where they need to be able to make themselves understood, where they need to be able to describe how they relate to their environment and how they see certain challenges in a way that is understandable by others. And the thing is, when you're dealing with something that is very new, something that you are in the process of learning, that that can be a fairly difficult challenge to actually make yourself understood. But when it is achieved, it is probably one of the most effective learning strategy strategies available to us. Music